I'm changing because my shirt says Budweiser under it and I feel like that's not the most appropriate for a school related video, so. Hi guys, so first of all, a lot of you guys watching may be rising high school seniors who are looking at colleges and planning to apply to colleges and you may be considering Purdue. So I thought I'd make a video that might help you guys learn more about the school. So yeah, today I'm gonna be talking about 10 things I hate about Purdue, but also because you learn in school that you present the argument that you want your viewer to agree with last, I'm also gonna be talking about 10 things I love about Purdue after I talk about the things I hate because at the end of the day, I love the school I'm going to and I want you guys to love it too. So, psychology for the win. All right, I'm just gonna jump right in. The first thing I hate, uh, the parties are, um, party scene's interesting. So, the most liked comment on my last video about Purdue was a question asking how the party scene was and then the comment responding to it was non-existent, so. Uh, that's fair. Party scene is not the best. However, I think a better word to describe it is that it's just exclusive. Like, it's there. There are parties all the time. If you step on thinking you're gonna have, like, a party experience like you see it on the movies, it's not gonna be quite what you expect. So, if you're looking to go to Purdue and then be able to just, like, walk up to frat parties and, like, have a fun time, that doesn't happen. <laughs> this basically just applies to, like, the frat parties. Because if you are not invited to a frat party, either you're not in, like, the frat or sorority that's invited or you're not on the list, then you're not gonna get in, basically. And this can be different by frats. I have a really close friend who's basically entire social circle is people in Greek life, and she's gotten denied for many functions because she just wasn't on the list. Basically, it's kind of a headache if you're trying to get into parties unless you rush, so. That being said, there are many other parties that they'll have on campus. Like, there's a lot of house parties, and basically if you have an address, and you can cough up five bucks, you're basically in. Other times clubs will throw parties, so I'm just using it as an example. Like the ski club may have a house, and then if you're in the ski club, you can go to their ski club parties or functions. So basically, if you want to party a lot, it's not impossible, but you just may have to talk to more people, get to know people, join clubs, and you'll be fine. There's definitely stuff going on all the time. The party scene is not non-existent, it's just more exclusive. And then obviously, if you want to rush, you're pretty much good, like don't worry about not being able to get into parties, you're probably gonna be good. Second thing I don't like about Purdue, tiny dorms. Their dorms are, a lot of them are okay, they're pretty nice, but there's some infamously small cramped dorms on campus, namely Meredith Hall, which is an all-girls hall, they have really tiny dorms, and the Carrie Closets, those are all-guys dorms, and the whole dorm of Carrie, from what I hear is okay, like they have some nice rooms there, they have like suites, sometimes they house the athletes there, because it's close to like the athletic part of campus, but there are a subset of really tiny rooms that are literally eight feet wide, which is literally so close that if you have two beds on either side of the room, you can literally hold hands with your roommate. Like that standard dorm room layout, it's just very, very cramped. Upside is that they're really cheap compared to the other dorms, but that's just the downside is that they're tiny and they don't have AC, which will suck for the first month of school. And that's really crappy that those exist and people have to live in those. <laughs> you can look up pictures, they're genuinely the tiniest dorms I think I've ever seen in my life. I can't think of another college that has dorms smaller than that. There's nothing you really do about it either because you don't choose your dorms. You can rank your room preferences, like by room type, but you're not guaranteed to get like the room you choose. So when you're an upperclassman at Purdue, like after your first year, you're allowed to choose your room. I was able to choose which like room I was living in this year, like the exact building and choose my roommate too. So that's a lot nicer, but your first year, for some reason, they just make you rank your preferences. And then it's basically a lottery. You end up where you end up and there's nothing you can do about it. Number three, cold weather. Now I'm from Chicago, so I'm used to cold weather. However, the thing about Chicago is that it's near the lake. So the lake sort of tempers any extreme temperatures in the area so in the winter time chances are it's gonna be a little warmer in chicago than like the rest of the suburbs in like middle the midwest and in the summertime vice versa it'll be a little bit cooler than the surrounding area so purdue's in the middle of nowhere it's in the middle of cornfield it gets hot and it gets really really cold like really really cold the past year we had the polar vortex hit and it got to negative 40 wind chill they canceled school we weren't supposed to go outside because you could freeze to death and get frostbite within 10 minutes and yeah it gets super super cold in the winter time. January and February really suck and it sucks to be outside. There's nothing else I can say about it. Chances are if you're from the Midwest, it's not gonna be any different from what you normally experience. However, if you're coming from California, like a lot of kids I knew or like anywhere else in the country, it gets really cold. So yeah, something to think about. Four, more conservative campus culture. And I don't mean like politically conservative. I like the political diversity. I think that's kind of cool that you can have people with different perspectives that challenge your own. And I think that's healthy for creating However, what I don't like is that basically Purdue 
doesn't seem to be living in 2019 for some aspects of the way like they have their dorm life set up or like other aspects. For example, there are no real co-ed dorms on campus. Yes, on the website it'll say that there's a bunch of co-ed dorms in that both men and women will live in the same hall. However, most dorms at Purdue are shaped like H's and like each wing is a different gender and they're just connected by like a little atrium in the middle or like a hallway or corridor or whatever. And like you won't be able to get to the other side without a key card. So it's basically just two separate dorms, like a male and a female dorm connected by a hallway, which is kind of crappy because there's no difference between all guys and all girls dorms because each like hall will already be separated. So if you're looking to like live on like a floor that's co-ed, like I know a lot of other my friends do at other big public schools, you're not gonna get that experience, which is kind of unfortunate because some people may want it, but not live only with people of the same gender as them, so. And there's also no, like no all gender bathrooms on campus. You'll never find one, which is kind of poopy. So like little things like that is like Purdue's kind of lagging. Number five, the dry campus rule. Basically Purdue has a rule where there's no alcohol really allowed on campus. Um, and like if you're living on campus and you're older than 21, generally if you're caught with alcohol in your dorm, because there's like people who are like under the age of 21 or nearby, you can get in trouble even if like everyone in your dorm room is over 21 and allowed to drink. However, from my experience, this doesn't stop anyone from drinking underage anyway. And there have been studies that have shown that dry campuses have higher rates of like alcohol related injuries and deaths so and also as a result of the dry campus policy there's another policy along with it called the amnesty policy which at most schools means if you are intoxicated and you call for help you won't get in trouble so that's what the amnesty policy is like at most schools however at purdue this only applies to like school functions which i guess means frat parties and like other club or like events that are like officially recognized by the school so if you get drunk in your dorm room you might not be able to call anyone for help without getting in trouble as well so that's crappy and dangerous. Another policy I don't like is the by association policy, which basically means if you're in the same room as, or like apartment as someone else who's drinking, even if you had no idea that they're drinking or you aren't drinking at all, you will get in trouble. Like I had a friend who got written up because she was just playing cards in a room while her friends were like having some beer and their RA caught them and then they were automatically in trouble. And an even crappier situation was that I had another friend whose roommate was stashing alcohol in the room and he didn't know about it. And then the RA busted him. So he got in trouble because they automatically assume you knew what was going on and you knew that they were hiding alcohol and they didn't, you didn't tell anybody. Even if that's completely false and even if you had no idea of what was happening, you can still get in trouble. From my moral standpoint, it just is really crappy that they do that, but that's just my opinion. Number six, overcrowding. I don't know if this happened this year, but my year they over-enrolled by like 700 students or something like that. So campus facilities were really squeezed, especially on the residence hall side. There were some people living in temporary housing. I know that was an infamous story that broke last year. Um, I ended up in housing for grad students. That doesn't happen normally. And just a lot of other dorms were like squeezed to try to make room for all these incoming freshmen that they couldn't support. I don't exactly know why Purdue does this. And I don't know if they're doing it again this year, but like basically what I've kind of theorized is that that since Purdue has a tuition freeze, which means tuition hasn't gone up for the past seven years and it won't go up for the next year at least. In order to like compensate for the lack of incoming revenue, they've just enrolled more students who are paying tuition. Seven, I said that there's not a lot to do. So this I only mean in the context of anything off campus. On campus, there's always stuff going on you shouldn't like really be worried about that. However, if you're trying to take a trip off campus to do things like in the surrounding area, there's literally nothing. You're in the middle of Cowtown. There's like, I don't know, corn. If you like corn, you can go off campus and play in the corn. I don't know. The closest city is Indianapolis, which is like an hour away. And the closest like major big city is Chicago. That's two hours away. So like those are the two major like metropolitan areas nearby. Besides that, like West Lafayette is a small town if, from my eyes, cause I'm from Chicago. Did I mention I'm from Chicago, by the way? Going from a big city to a smaller city of like 200,000 people is kind of a transition that you may have to deal with if you decide to go to Purdue and you're from a larger metropolitan area or just an area where there's more things to do. Yeah, it's a typical Midwestern town. There may not be a lot of things to do. That being said, you can take the day trips. There are like, you can have fun off campus. It's just that in the immediate like 30 minute radius area, there may not be like a lot of fun stuff to do. Let's just say if you went to like a more vibrant college town or went to a college in a city or just went to a college in an area that's has more natural beauty. Like if you're into like nature and stuff. Eighth, eight mental and physical health services. Those are kind of lacking, not gonna lie. PUSH, which is the Purdue University Student Health, I think that's what it stands for, is usually not the most reliable. I've had not the best experiences going there. Appointments usually get booked really quickly, so if you're sick and you need immediate help, chances are you should rather go to an urgent care off campus 
or like a hospital because Purdue will not be able to help you immediately. I can talk more about it in another video if you really want to know, but it kind of lacks. Luckily, I've never had to use their mental health services, which is called CAPS. I don't know what it stands for, but allegedly there was like three month to five month waiting list on appointments. So like if you urgently need mental health services or you need like a, someone to talk to and you can't access that, you have to wait for months to get it, which is really messed up, especially if you are in like a very bad place and you may not have three months to wait. And I'm not sure if this is different from most college services because I noticed a lot of people when they talk about the things they don't like about their college is their mental health services. But nonetheless, that's not an excuse. Nine, lack of personal attention. And this is, I think, just something that comes with going with going. Yeah, this is just something that I think goes with going to a big public school. If you're looking for, you know, help navigating through like classes or like advising, chances are you're going to have to do a lot of it yourself. You're not going to get the personal attention you may have gotten in high school or at a smaller college. It is a big public school. There are 30,000 undergrads, 40,000 students in total. You're just going to be a number in the system. No one else is like looking out for you. Number 10, the engineering superiority complex. Slice. And I put slash sexism. So Purdue is very well known for engineering. I've heard some people ask me if Purdue is like an all engineering school. Not true, but the College of Engineering is the largest camp college on campus, and it's also one of the most well-known. And in general, it is more competitive to get into the engineering school than maybe some of the other colleges. I'm trying to say that as objectively as possible. To add to that, engineering is generally still a male-dominated field, and I think Purdue is taking strides to try to change that, but as of right now, it's still 75% guys in the College of Engineering. So the combination of people letting their program that they're in get to their head and the fact that they're males and they may have big, big energy leads to a sort of culture of engineering superiority, which is really, really sh You'll have some people in the College of Engineering who legitimately think they're better because the field they're studying, which is so messed up, but it happens. And even if people don't directly feel that way or say that they, that's how they feel, it's kind of a vibe that you may get when you step on campus. Engineering superiority is real and it's kind of a meme culture on campus that that's the stereotype that engineers are cocky, but it's completely warranted because I've seen it happen many times. The other thing about this is that, like I said before, Purdue is generally male dominated. And if you're female entering engineering, there's a lot of sexism. I haven't experienced it obviously because I'm a dude, but I've had so many female engineering friends tell me about their crappy experiences with mansplainers and just condescending males in general. So I had a story of one of my friends who on the first day of engineering, they were paired in a group of four, where it was, or it was her and another girl and then two guys. And then they were tasked with making like, um, there's this first project that they had to do and then they had to display it on a poster. They're like, okay, so we'll just do all the work and then you two girls just work on the poster. And they're like, sounds good. <laughs> People suck. So, and sometimes they don't even know it, that they're doing it. So just something to be aware of. You don't need me to tell you that. I'm trying not to come off as me like preaching you to be aware of this, but it's just me being the messenger saying that's exists on campus, people are sexist, it's really shitty, and there's very little you can do about it other than just do what you do and don't care what anyone else thinks, okay? And number 12, this is like a middle, this isn't necessarily something I hate, and it can actually be something that's good depending on your perspective, but Greek life is prevalent. Although it's kind of makes up a smaller percentage of the student body than like other Big Ten universities, I think it's around 20% of all students are in Greek life. And that may not sound like a lot, but because a majority of the social scene revolves around like the frat parties, because like I said, there's not a lot to do outside of campus, it may feel bigger than it actually is. So if you want to go to a, like a big school that doesn't have a huge Greek presence, Purdue may not be the one for you. But if you're looking for a school with plenty of Greek life, come to Purdue, we got you. So that's basically all the things I hate or dislike. I don't hate everything I just said. There are definitely things I don't really like. Now, like I said, I love the school I'm going to. So at the end of the day, um, here are some of the top 10 reasons why I love the school that I'm going to. First thing I love, school spirit. It's everywhere. Everyone loves Purdue. Everyone's very like proud to be a Boilermaker. Um, everyone goes to the football games. Everyone goes to the basketball games or even most of my friends who aren't really into sports like will still, still come along for sporting events just because it's fun. Everyone's really like excited and super supportive of our teams. We also have good athletics generally speaking, especially for basketball and the football season was really good. If you love a school, a school spirit, definitely come to Purdue. They have a lot of it. Even after you graduate, like I've noticed there's Purdue alumni everywhere. Chances are if you're wearing a Purdue shirt out in public and there's a Purdue alumni, they will tell you to boil her up. It's really cool. People like the school. People who've been to the school love the school. I've noticed it's way more prevalent than other Big Ten schools like University of Illinois. I've been there many times and most of my friends there have never been to the games. And I was like, that's really sad. 
because games are fun. Number two, Superior Academics. It's a really good, although some other Big Ten schools will, sh will poop on it, sorry. It's a good school. No matter what you study, you're gonna end up probably getting a good education, and especially if you're looking at stuff in STEM fields, like veterinary medicine, or like nursing, or agriculture, you're gonna get a superior education. And when you graduate with a degree from Purdue in one of those fields, you'll get a lot of attention from recruiters. Number three thing I love, uh, low out-of-state tuition, which results in geographic diversity. So generally speaking, the out-of-state tuition is gonna be lower than a lot of other Big Ten schools or public universities. For me particularly, the cost of going in-state to Illinois was very similar to the out-of-state tuition for me to go to Purdue. And as a result of this low out-of-state tuition, they enroll a lot of out-of-state students. So I think it's pretty like 50-50 where it's like 50, maybe 55% of people from Indiana. And the other half is from out of state or just international students. I think that's super cool. I meet so many people from other parts of the country that like I didn't think about, <laughs> you know? Like I have friends from Arizona, California, a lot from New Jersey. Like for some reason, there's a lot of kids from New Jersey. I don't know why. If you're from Purdue and you notice this, just let me know, but I think it's a conspiracy theory. I don't know. And kids from South Carolina, Florida, like all around the country. It's super cool. And international students too. I know friends from like China, like Dubai or like Europe, it's it's just a very diverse place and you meet a lot of people from different places. Four, I said mostly good food. I say mostly because I've had some days where the food is just awful, but in general, the food is, has been better than I've seen at a lot of other colleges. So if you want a place where you can have palatable food that you can enjoy, it's something a lot of people overlook actually is the food. But if you think about it, every single day, you're gonna be eating that food and you won't be able to go out every single day. Being able to go to the dining court, use a meal swipe, not pay any money, at least up front and have some good food as much as you want. That's really nice. Five, the people. Everyone there is just super chill. And the vibe I got from Purdue from all the people is probably the main reason why I chose the school. It's just, everyone's really nice there. No one's really pretentious. I, I'm just kidding, oops, <laughs> engineers. But yeah, in general, because also Purdue is like a good school, Indiana, smartest students, a lot of smart people from around the country. I like being surrounded by smart people because you learn more, so. Six, tons of clubs and interest groups. So there's 1,100 student organizations on campus, which is a lot. You'll generally find something you're interested in. I found some weird ass clubs there, like the Squirrel Feeding Club, the Anti-Squirrel Feeding Club, the Anthropomorphic Animal Club, the Furry Club. Whatever you're interested in, you'll probably find a group there and all these different organizations will throw their own events that are open to everybody. I know like one of my favorite ones is the EDM club at Purdue throws a music festival at the end of the year and they actually get some like major artists to come in too. And just in general, Purdue will throw a bunch of like spontaneous events going around. So if you check this website called Boiler Link, you can find like different things that are going on. Like sometimes they'll just bring puppies to the main quad and then pet puppies. And that's just so much fun. I remember the week before finals, they had an ax throwing range that they just set up. So you can relieve your stress that way too, if you'd rather not pet puppies, but throw things and destroy things. Uh, number seven, I said, it's a safe campus. And in general, like I feel safe walking to and from school. Even if I go back at like two in the morning, I feel completely safe. Some of my friends who have been to like other Indiana colleges like IU, they said they have not felt that way. And they're actually scared of being raped or being attacked by walking late around their campuses. So, and this is supported by statistics. The, in general, campus security, campus police does a good job of making sure it's a safe place to be. They have a lot of resources for making sure you feel comfortable. Like they have the safe walk, which is basically, you can call someone to walk with you if you don't wanna walk home alone. And when there is like some crime alert or like sexual assault alert, they'll send out like a campus-wide email. Eight, unique campus traditions. There's like endless campus traditions. Some of my favorites are the random bikes and trees tradition where people just put unlocked bikes. They don't steal unlocked bikes. They just put them in a tree. And it can be really funny sometimes. It's like really, what's the German word? It's called like Schadenfreude, where you just like take pleasure in other people's misfortune. It's kind of funny to see it, but you just hope it's not your own bike high up in a tree. I remember one time I was walking around and I saw a bike that wasn't just put up like, like head height, which is what you usually see, but it was literally like this 50 foot like oak tree and it was way up in like the branches, like all the way near the top. But yeah, that's a weird, funny campus tradition you'll see a lot in the summer, like early in the fall semester and at end of spring semester. And the other major tradition is called Grand Prix, which is this like go-kart race that they have at the end of the week. But I think it's like two weekends before finals week, but it's a go-kart race where each like student organizations build carts and they just have a big old race. But I think what everyone else more looks forward to is the week before is just one giant pregame for 
the Saturday of the race. A lot of the frats will like throw darty where people will throw their own parties. And it's just a really wild week. In the winter time, there's the Slater Hill sleds where people just like make sleds out of like cardboard or whatever they can and just slide down Slater Hill. In the summertime, there's fountain runs. This can only happen for like the first two weeks because it's warm enough. Yeah, there's just, I can make a whole video about traditions if you want me to. Nine, this is, seems kind of small, but it's just called on the go. If you have extra meal swipes, you can go to these like, use the meal swipe and you can just grab any four items you want. And this was so useful because like I said in another video, 13 meals is a lot more than you think. And I would end the week sometimes with like three or four meals left and I need to use them. So then I just go to the grab and go and grab 16 different items for free basically. 10, I just put career opportunities at work. And this kind of goes along with the academics I said earlier, but Purdue has really good networking and connections and like career services like resume, review they have a career closet if you don't have a suit for an interview you can find one for free at their career closet chances are you're gonna find a good job if just going to purdue i could keep going with the things i like about purdue but those are just 10 of the things i really really enjoy that came to my mind and in the end of the day i really love the school for those reasons and i hope you find that you like the school too so yeah that's my video for today i know it might be kind of long but i just did so much talking my brain died oh my god i hope you guys like this video Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, comment down below anything you want, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!